We've still got a few more days in Paul's letter to the Galatians. Even though he's writing to a, a Gentile audience, today he appeals uh, to Abraham from the Old Testament to convince uh, the Galatians that they're children of the covenant. So we're going to hear that uh, reading today. In the Gospel, uh, Jesus also appeals to Old Testament figures, uh, to Jonah, uh, to the Queen of the South, uh, King Solomon. Uh, he's somewhat exasperated by the fact that people are trying to see him, but maybe for the wrong reasons, because he's uh, worked miracles, maybe they just want to see that. So we're going to hear that reading today. So we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Of course, we open ourselves again to his Spirit present in this place. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. In our Mass intention today, we're remembering Father Bob Schwartz. O God, you have willed that your church be the sacrament of salvation for all the nations, so that Christ's saving work may continue to the end of the ages. Stir up, we pray, the hearts of your faithful people, and grant that they may feel a more urgent call to work for the salvation of every creature, so that from all the peoples on earth, one family and one people of your own may arise and increase. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman and the other by the freeborn woman. The son of the slave woman was born naturally, the son of the freeborn through a promise. Now, this is an allegory. These women represent two covenants. One was from Mount Sinai, bearing children for slavery. This is Hagar. But the Jerusalem above is freeborn, and she is our mother. For it is written, Rejoice, you barren one who bore no children. Break forth and shout, you who were not in labor. For more numerous are the children of the deserted one than of her who has a husband. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we are children not of the slave woman, but of the freeborn woman. For freedom, Christ set us free. So stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. The word of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Praise, you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord, both now and forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From the rising to the setting of the sun is the name of the Lord to be praised. High above all nations is the Lord. Above the heavens is his glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Who is like the Lord our God? Who looks upon the heavens and the earth below? He raises up the lowly from the dust. From the dunghill, he lifts up the poor. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. It's a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, this generation is an evil generation. 
it seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, but there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it, because at the preaching of Jonah, they repented, and there is something greater than Jonah here. The Gospel of the Lord. So perhaps, like I said, a, a moment of exasperation from Jesus. The people are clamoring to him, no doubt, uh, his reputation as a healer. I mean, he's given sight to people who never saw before in their life. Uh, people who were paralyzed are suddenly able to stand up and walk around. All of these things. Uh, perhaps they want to catch, uh, uh, you know, a miracle like that for themselves to be able to see it, or they need one for themselves. But Jesus has come for much more than that. He's not just a a snake oil salesman coming along, a miracle worker only. He is, of course, the Son of God. And he's come to announce uh, a message of, of God's closeness to people, that uh, God is now able to see us, see anyone, eye to eye, through Jesus' eyes. But they are looking to be wowed by a miracle. Jesus' message he uses the word here about Jonah. When he preached to the Ninevites, they repented. Among Jesus' first words when he started his public ministry, echoing John the Baptist, his message was to repent. It literally means to turn around. I think maybe in our cynical kind of moments, we think people can't really change, can't really turn around. But it's the message of Jesus that uh, people can actually be so struck by the experience of encountering God that they become sort of transparent even to themselves and they can see the places that need turning around and can actually do it. We think maybe it can't happen. It doesn't happen very often. We have sayings like a leopard can't change its spots and so forth. But Really, Jesus believed in the possibility of change, that people can become different, can reorient their way of thinking and being. This is the message of Jesus. Uh, he wants people to, to hear that and understand that, not to just uh, have a front seat to witness a miracle, but to encounter God. This, of course, is our hope uh, as well, that uh, the encounter with Jesus changes us from inside out, makes us different and new people, oriented in a new direction. This is still the grace of encountering Jesus. Uh, we pray for that for ourselves, for everyone in the world today. I invite you to stand with me then as we are aware of our need for God's grace and help every day. And so we turn to God with our needs. As always, we do pray for our neighbors, family, friends, members of the parish here, most especially those who are sick or in any trouble today, we pray to the Lord. And of course, these days we continue to pray for peace in our world, for an end to this violence in Ukraine and in Israel. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Loving God, you do call each of us to repent, to turn around, to live a new life. We ask for your grace and we ask all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to Almighty God. Look, O Lord, upon the face of Christ, who handed himself over as a ransom for all, so that through him, from the rising of the sun to its setting, your name may be exalted among the nations, and in every place a single offering may be presented to your majesty through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them. They may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Again, especially today, we're remembering Father Bob Schwartz and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Of course, every step of our journey, our encounter with Jesus, we have his very prayer on our lips, and so we can say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's turn to one another then and offer some sign of God's peace.
Lamb of God. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Like it or not, I'll be back Wednesday for Mass with you here. That'll be the final installment from the letter to the Galatians. And the Gospel, of course, is, is our continuing journey toward Jerusalem with Jesus. So. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.